Well, I certainly have artists that inspired me when I was young mm -hmm. to want to perform. Um, probably the biggest one is Freddie Mercury. Um, wow. I, I don't know if I wanted to be him or, you know, I think I wanted to marry him when I was a kid. I was in for a lot of disappointment, but... Um, <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including this young lady and myself. I'm Joshua, and my guest today is a musician, artist, poet, hater of tambourines, and a staunch supporter of Room 6. Her new six-song EP, Wild and Free, is out now and uh, available by clicking the link down in the description. Also a member of the new band, The Maybe Four, with Chris Dunn, who I'm hoping to interview soon, hint, hint and friends of the channel, Russell Christian and Joey Hines. Please welcome to the channel, Mandolin. Say hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> ah! So, number one, welcome to the channel. Cheers. Cheers. We will toast with this lovely Room 6 merch available at room6.shop. Yay! This just in. You can show your support for Room 6 by going to room6.shop after this video. We have tons of merch, including discounted cold weather merch and more. Whatever you need to show your support for local music and Room 6 is there, from shirts to hoodies to mugs to posters to stickers. Whether showing off that you're a patron on our Patreon page with our Two Brains One Bottle shirt, or reminding people to just be amazing, Room6.shop has what you need to be a friend of the channel. Thanks for supporting Room 6. Alright, I'm done. <laughs> so, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. How awesome. I am unbelievable. It covers me both ways. Thanks for tuning in. Just kidding. <laughs> so, number one, I wanted to say, uh, I already heard some of the album. I, I'm also going to be doing a review of the album. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Click down there and ring the bell. You'll be notified when I do the review. The review will post probably before this interview. But uh, in the meantime, subscribe, will you? I, I really like it. It's... It touches a lot of um, memories for me because I, I also did this, the singer songwriter thing. I have two albums out where you know a lot of it was me, and I can hear that. But I also hear a lot of the influences that uh, of, of people that you've incorporated in, like Joey Hines. Mm -hmm. There's at least one song where I'm like, "That's straight Joey Hines." It sounds a lot <laughs> like Joey Hines. So who influenced who is the question? Because his latest stuff. I was like, this sounds very familiar, but it's still you. It's still different. Yeah, I think that we have probably been an inspiration to each other. It's mm -hmm. been really great to work with him. I, I think that's really what's doing it for me is because you recorded a lot of his latest stuff with him. So, like, you're on there with your drum or, you know, your guitar or singing. And now here you are. With <laughs> and so it's, it's very much like, hmm, okay, I see what's going on. Um... Speaking of inspiration, you have a book of poetry out. I do. It's called The Yellow Light mm -hmm. on Lulu.com. Link will be down there as well. Um, now that's under a, a pseudonym though, a nom de plume. Yes. What's January. January uh, Sky. January Sky. Why, Jan <laughs> why January Sky and why did you need the, feel the need for a nom de plume? Uh, well, I started writing when I was about 14. And um, the first poem I ever wrote that really had an effect on myself mm -hmm. and made me feel like it was something I needed to do, which became compulsive and I would write every day. It all started with a poem called January. And I really connected with it after I wrote it, felt like I had expressed myself really well with it. Mm -hmm. So I took on that name back then for anything that I wrote. And uh, That's a good name. Thank you. It's really weird because I had a friend I hung out with here and there who had this friend named January who was like a lot of trouble in his life oh. and he would talk to me about this girl and all of the trouble that she would cause amongst him and his group of friends but every time he said her name I'd just be like January she must be so I and he was telling me how <laughs> terrible she was but I was like really enamored with that name nice so. um, now aside from the, the poetry and the EP you also have uh, some merch out there, some 
t-shirt with your own art on it. I do. I kind of forget sometimes that I put that out on, there. Uh, Threadless. Threadless.com. Yeah. Link will be down there as well. Um, actually, here's a picture. Boom. And um, that the artwork, I, no I noticed that it's just two, two pieces of art, mm -hmm. but you've got like the whole range of merch styles and things you can do. Whereas a lot of people will do the other way. <laughs> They'll be like, here's shirts, maybe some hats, and there's a whole bunch of you know, d design options. What is it about those two pieces of art that made you think, I want to put these on merch? Uh, well, uh, I had a few art shows in mm -hmm. the past. Uh, I used to live in Portland, Oregon for a yeah. few years, and I did a lot of art shows there. And I've sold a lot of art, but those are ones that I wouldn't sell, that I've held on to for years and years. I've lost storage units and had quick moves where things were left behind, oh. but those have stayed with me a long time. I feel like they're a good representation of what I do with physical art, but I definitely plan to add more to it. Right. It's sort of something that a friend said I should do like a year ago, and I thought, why haven't I tried to do this yet? So there will be more paintings <laughs> uploaded. But... Ruby, so hopefully more merch too. Yeah, I mean, you can get shower yeah. curtains or mouse pads or I don't... Have you looked into uh, reprint or like, you know, smaller prints of a painting to sell at shows? Uh, that's on Threadless as well. Um, I do want to find like a more economical way to get some prints enlarged. But... I think I did see postcards on there or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. so you, you can get some of that there. But... Cool. Um, let's talk about, first of all, how long you lived in Vegas? Because I know, like you said, you, you, had, you weren't born here. Nope. So, uh, how long have you suffered in Sin City? <laughs> uh, so I've been here about 15 years. Right on. Been here about 17 years, so we're, we're natives now. Yes, yes, that is definitely true. Once you're here 10 years, you're a native. Um, and how long have you been doing music? That's a tricky question because mm -hmm. I've been performing since I was four years old. Uh, my whole family was part of the local theater community. Oh, nice. So growing up, I got to paint sets and see my grandpa in all the plays. My dad was the lighting guy. My uncle was the sound guy. Wow. Uh, you had no my choice. grandma <laughs> made the costumes. Like, so I grew up in that environment, which I'm really grateful I did right. because that's how young the performing arts bug bit me. And when I was younger, it used to just be like, if someone had a wedding, I would go up to the stage and ask for the mic from the DJ and, and sing there at holiday parties. My parents would put me on the counter mm -hmm. and I'd sing for my family, you know, so. Yeah. Did the, at this point, was it like you kept seeing the same DJs and they were like, oh yeah, we know you. <laughs> or no. was it always like, um. Pretty big family, but not, not well, that, that many Cause weddings. I mean, if I'm a DJ and some, some kid <laughs> or, you know, some person comes up and is like, can I sing a song? I think I'm getting paid to do. You always gotta think, oh. I don't know this person. <laughs> I don't know. As far as I know, uh, they always said yes. Right on. <laughs> I had that happen at my wedding, actually. My reception, I wanted to sing Unforgettable by Nat King Cole. Um, and she didn't, nobody knew it was happening. And uh, the, the was it, it was like a kind of a band, like a two-piece, like a keyboard and singer. And I, and I was like, I'm the groom, you know, I'm the reason you're here. And, and they let, they must have been like, okay, hope it's not a train wreck. And then, you know, having, you know, sung it many times before I was, I did it. And I always wondered like, cause I've never DJed. I've never, I've, I've run, I've done uh, open sh open mics before, but that's an open mic. You're, you're, they're supposed to come up. I've never um, run a karaoke night or, or one of those. And uh, I always wondered how you, you know, did you have to talk your way into it basically? But it sounds like no. no. No, no. Cute little kid. Yeah. With pigtails. Right on. They, they always said yes. All right. Um, so now that's how long you've been doing music. How long have you been mandolin as a stage name? I guess that happened around like 2008, maybe? No. 2010, probably. Right on. Oh, so, yeah. Is Lynn the middle, middle name? Is that what it is? Um, no, actually, my first name is Mandolin. Uh, I've submitted to change it legally, so I'm just waiting for the oh, paper it's, that okay. it says it's official. Because so. on the page for um, on the page for Yellow Light, it, it says your 
previous for, full full name. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just for like, legality, you know. Okay. Even with this CD release, because mm -hmm. uh, I don't technically right. have that paper yet. Right. I right. still had to, you know, list my old name. Okay. And it's pretty close. I mean, most people have been able to get along with that. I just go by Manda or even Mandy mm -hmm. is cool. Just not Amanda. Really? Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, so from that, I want to talk about musical influences because, well, it sounds like the theater and just all of that was your musical influence. But in terms of like the music you write and play is not show tunes. No. You know? So, <laughs> just, um, so I was wondering where did the influence come? Like what's your earliest musical influence that made you think like, I want to do that when I, you know, play guitar or whatever. Um, well, I certainly have artists that inspired me when I was young mm -hmm. to want to perform. Um, probably the biggest one is Freddie Mercury. Um, wow. I, I don't know if I wanted to be him or, you know, I think I wanted to marry him when I was a kid. I was in for a lot of disappointment, but, um, <laughs> oh, but, uh, but he was my, probably my first musical idol. I yeah. was a big fan also of Mick Jagger, a uh, big fan of Stevie Nicks. Mm. So those right. are probably three of like the first. I, I definitely, you know, pick up the, the Stevie Nicks. Don't hear Mick Jagger in you at all. I'm sorry. You know, it's about the funky you're not style. A, you're not up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it's about that that uh, genuine style thing. No, I definitely, I, I, I get it. Um, did you hear the story about Mick Jagger? Like recently, he went into a bar and uh, I want to say like Rhode Island, some some place in the states. Where are you from? I know, Providence. We'll get to that. We'll jump ahead. Uh, but he went into a bar, like, somewhere in the middle of the United States. No one recognized him. He was wearing, a, like, a baseball hat, but no one recognized him. He had a drink. I think he, you know, chatted up some people. But no one recognized him. And he had, I, I don't know if he ever was just like, you know, do you know who I am? <laughs> I bet he loved it. Probably. I would think being recognized everywhere is kind of one of the bad sides of being famous. I know, but I wouldn't mind trying it. <laughs> I mean, there are some good sides to it too, I'm sure, but I know when I've lived in smaller towns for a long time, right. if I go to the corner store for milk in the morning, still in my pajamas, and I run into people who know who I am and I don't know who they are, that's when it's time to move. <laughs> that's how I lived in my 20s. I moved around a lot and just, you know. I will say this, second date with my wife, okay, so second date with someone who's, things are going well. And this is, uh, this is in Davis, California. So kind of small town, but not like, you know, hick town in the middle of nowhere. And I was known for karaoke. I was known for do hitting the karaoke there because I would sell it, honey. I would, you know, nice. like, I, I studied dance for 10 years. I, I know my way around theater. I would get up there and just go for it. And I would do uh, Kissing a Fool by George Michael. I would, you know, do Bailamos um, by Enrique Iglesias. And th and they were, these were like, they had the wireless mark, mic. I was able to like work the crowd and everything. And I was single, so why not, you know? And uh, I guess I didn't realize how, like, I kind of was starting to get known. It's a college town. Mm. I'm, I'm on, and uh, we're on a, a date, and we go to have a, a, a drink at the place where we had met, which was a restaurant with a bar, and met my wife dancing in a bar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it can happen. And, and we're in there, and this girl comes in. And I don't recognize her. She's with her mom. She goes, Mom, it's the karaoke guy. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about just like being, like feeling, I'm, I'm so proud of yourself, but trying to play cool, trying to play cool. Yeah. Yes. It's always exciting to discover you have a nickname with other people. Well, it depends on the nickname. About. Yeah. But uh, she, made, she made me sing for her mom, sing a song. So my, oh. my, my wife is there, you know, second date and just be like, who the heck, what the hell's going on? It could be awkward. Yeah, well. <laughs> To, to this day, though, if I start singing that kind of stuff, she's always, like, just totally mocking me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've been together 21, year, or 21 years and married 19, so I think, she's, I think I'm stuck with her. I think she's stuck with me. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. So, from uh, earliest influences, what are your current influences? What's kind of getting you jazz now, like, or what gets you in the mood to start writing music? An interesting question. I mean, uh, I think that's why I the it. last <laughs> couple of years, um, I've really been into hearing music I haven't heard before. Um, it's why I'm a big supporter of 
the original music scene mm -hmm. um, and why I think there's some importance to being part of the original music scene. But uh, a lot of times I just stumble around YouTube and yeah. hit a suggestion. It's like the six degrees of suggestion, you know, where you watch mm -hmm. a suggested video and then you watch a suggested video from that. And I've discovered a lot of cool artists that way, like a lot of younger artists right. that really inspire me. Uh, like Alice Phoebe Lou is one of them. Okay. Um, just super young girl, totally captivating performer, really cool original stuff, you know. And she was like a stumble find, so. Uh, that and TikTok is a good way to do it. I haven't TikToked yet. <laughs> I, well, you know, I've, I've got a TikTok channel. And a lot of it is promoting Room 6 and, and you know, I, uh, like there'll be a little TikTok about this interview when, when the time comes. Gotcha. Uh, and, and there's that. But I also do a little, like I get my yayas out, I get my little funny, like, you know, uh, feed or lip syncing kind of silly stuff, uh, or just reacting to, to people's other TikToks. But I also stumble across musicians who will do, I'm looking at them, you know, generally much younger than me. I'm looking at them going like, I wish I'd had this. Because they, they have, you know, huge followings, and if they ever play a show somewhere, they're going to have a crowd. Yeah. And, and um, I, I'm getting better about scheduling out things like that, where I have a TikTok for Room 6, and I also have a TikTok for Joshua Courtright Music. Mm -hmm. And the Joshua Courtright Music has one video which says, hey, go over to Room 6, because that's where you'll, I'm doing stuff. But now I'm starting to look into some uh, like OC cosplays, you know, original mm -hmm. characters, and and I want to you know start uh, putting out uh, many music videos. But it's hard because this editing, that damn editing, takes forever. Uh, it's it takes, a lot of work. And you know the wife and the kid and the job, blah blah blah. So I know why I laugh. First world problems. But um, <laughs> I have stumbled upon uh, also just doing the show. And asking that question, I hear so many musicians and bands that I've never heard of. And then when I'm editing, I make you know little notes and I, and I go check them out. And some of it's not for me and some of it is. Um, but also doing reviews for people when they say so-and-so, like uh, Scotty Dub. Mm -hmm. So many people collaborate. So I'm like, never heard of them, never heard of them, never heard of them. I've gotten people on the show because of collaborations they've done with other people who I've reviewed. So it's like you said, six okay. degrees of separation. Yeah. yeah. It's great. It's good to just put your feelers out there and see mm -hmm. what what music the YouTube gods bring you today. Right. You know. One of my favorite things <laughs> is when I I'll go, I'll see a show with like they've been on the channel and they've been on the channel. I don't know the metal act. They're touring from somewhere. Let's go check them out. Exactly. Yeah. And I discover a band I really love, and maybe we get to do a, a, a virtual interview, or maybe they're local and I just never heard of them. And then we get them in here. That's happened a lot. And. Um, I just actually, uh, I have a review coming up soon, so subscribe. Uh, I, ha I have a review coming out soon with uh, The Nocturnal Affair and Dirt Halo and uh, Bravo Delta. And Bravo Delta, I'd never gotten a chance to check them out. They're amazing. Never got a chance to actually see Nocturnal Affair. They just, they've been on the show for an interview and I haven't had a chance to review their stuff and I haven't ever seen them live. They were amazing. And Dirt Halo, I'm practically their, their fourth member now. <laughs> but uh, it was a really nice opportunity to be like, it was like a Room 6 reunion, I think is what I called it on the, the, the thumbnail. Nice. But be, because, yeah, it's like the drummer from Dirt Halo plays drums for Nocturnal Affair, and the guitarist for Nocturnal Affair also plays guitar for Bravo Delta. So it was just like almost everybody that was on stage, I, I was like, you've been in my kitchen, or, you know, That's something nice. like that. So yeah. you're building community. <laughs> yeah, I think it's awesome. Slowly but surely, very, very slowly but surely. Um, moving on. So we talked about influences, we talked about... Um, just, you know, how, you, how long I've been here and all that. I wanted to talk about show memories. What's your favorite show memory from you performing, <laughs> whether by yourself or as part of a group? Uh, what is, and it, when I say favorite, I mean just what is that one that you're like, sticks out and you're, it could be like somebody went to jail or that time I, you know, walked home in my underwear, whatever, you know, the, the, what is a story that you just love pulling out? Uh, you know... It used to be uh, that my old band had a chance to open up for George Clinton. Funkadelic. People? Mm-hmm. And wow. uh, 
on stage for that show, there was a song we were playing where everyone was waving their arms and singing along. And that used to be that favorite moment for me. Well, it is a Actually, pretty awesome moment. Where yeah. was that? Uh, LBCS. Oh, LBCS. That was a while ago. Oh, yes. fond memories. Yes. Unless you played to 10 people. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about it's that. It's a big, other intimidating areas. room. Uh, yeah. But uh, to play for it packed with the doors open, going into the other side, like, right. you uh, know, of course, that's like feather in my cap and sure. one of my favorite moments. Uh, but a couple weeks ago, I was playing with my new band, The Maybe Four, and uh, we were playing a showcase, and I was playing one of my original songs, and I was watching this lady standing in the back. It's this blonde woman, she had her man with her, and they were kind of standing up in the back doorway. Mm -hmm. And was this at Goldmine Tavern? Yes. Ah. It was indeed. The description of the place, I immediately knew. And I had a really brand new experience. Oh. I'm watching this woman while I'm singing, and she was singing along with me to my original song. Oh wow, that's and, the dream. Yeah, the line was, You're in my heart, and she was like swaying back and forth and she had her hands on her heart. And she was singing it up into the air, and it was amazing. And this was one of your new songs off your EP? Yeah. How does she know? That's what I wondered. And so I, uh, well, I mean, you know, we finished it before, and I so. performed it before, uh, but, you know, it was still kind of shocking. And yeah. I turned around when we were done to Russell and said, I don't know if I know that woman in the back of the room, but she's singing along with my song. It's wild. Yeah. And I went and met her afterwards, and she was just like, oh, I, I love your music. I feel like I know the song and can sing along before it's over, <laughs> you know? And uh, that was a really cool compliment and just a really, you know, so, mind-blowing moment So she, for me. she just was figuring out as, as it went along? I guess so, yeah. She was just I've had, feeling I've had it. music like that where, because it's a, I don't know, if, because of the way language works, it, there's a certain phrase where you're just like, this is coming, but I've never been that enraptured to the point where I'm just singing like that's amazing but, but congrats thank you good on ya <laughs> um what that actually leads me to another question though about the maybe four mm -hmm. or maybe I should save that for when I interview that the band no I'm gonna ask you okay why the maybe four is it because how many people should okay. we have in the band ah maybe four well there is some joke to it in that um you know the first few shows that we played it mm -hmm. wasn't all four of us it was different versions of three of us. How many people are playing the show? Uh, yeah, uh, so, so there is some joking in that. Um, we all, the four of us, played a lot of shows together back in 2019 yes, and the did. start of 2020. And so there was sort of this momentum for us all to play together. But up until like maybe the fourth, maybe four show, uh, we had never all four of us played at the same time. Like it wasn't until one of our first practices that we even all played at the same time in the same room, right. let alone on stage. Uh, so some of it's funny like that, but also, you know, we uh, worked really hard to come up with a band name and uh, it's sometimes a hard thing to do, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, we're at a stage of trying to find the name where we were looking at band name, uh, naming the band after a song that one of us likes. And uh, so we were all going through song titles of favorite bands, and I was like, what about one of the songs we wrote? Uh, so we have a song called The Maybes, uh, which me and Joey wrote via email last summer during the shutdown. Okay. First time I ever wrote a song via email. Uh, it's inspired by one of my poems in my book huh. called The Maybes, uh, and there's some lines from a couple other poems in the book. Uh, it was Joey's idea, and he sent me what he wrote and asked what do you think of this? Like, do you like that I'm doing this? Would you help me finish writing this? So <laughs> we uh, corresponded via email and sent parts to each other. And within a couple of days, we wrote a song and uh, it's called The Maybes. So we talked about being called The Maybes. There is a band in England. Yes, I that believe I've, called the Maybes. I've come across that name. So uh, we, you know, a friend of mine suggested The Maybe Four. Anyway, there's a. It, it's just, it, it's. I like it because it strikes when you hear it. You're like, you feel like, did I hear that right? Is that right? The maybe four, not the maybe fours. But the maybe four. Uh, so I, I like it. I, I just, I was sitting there going like, there's got to be a story. There's got to be a story. There, I mean, there is a longer version of that story for oh. sure. We'll uh, save it for the the band interview. I think so. And and 
hopefully we will have the maybe four on here. Uh, Russell, Joey, if you're watching, you know the way. Actually, <laughs> Russell hasn't been physically here. He he was my first, second, second virtual interview. Uh, Joey, of course, I'm, <laughs> I pr I have uh, one of his he shirts. He's here, right? Pretty much, yeah. Joey, oh Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cut that out. This, this is my kitchen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so I wanted to dive a little bit into more into you a little bit. Okay. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about dumpster diving art from uh, RISD. Oh, well, yeah. So Because that piece is actually really cool. Um, I'll let you tell the story if you want, but uh, sure. I was wondering if you still have that piece around. I do. It's hanging in my bedroom right now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the piece I'm talking about, Bink. It, you you were you went back home because you're originally from Providence, Rhode Island. That's right. Right. Born and raised. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I've never been there actually, so I don't I, I don't I don't know. You should go. Um, I've been through Rhode Island, I think. Yeah, so, it only takes about forty five minutes. Yeah, don't blink. Yeah, you'll miss it. <laughs> um, but uh, then you used to go to the Rhode Island School of Design. Uh, I never attended the school as a student, uh, but I lived uh, when I started living on my own. I lived always on the east side of town near Brown University and RISD campus. Their campuses are very close together. Mm -hmm. Cool old neighborhood, historic houses, and lots right. of artsy culture, right. and so it's right at home there. Um, so yeah, uh, every May and December, dumpster diving at RISD was like a really great way to get Because you were descriptive, you were like- campuses and you know, old art supplies. Yeah, it, it, it was obviously not your first time doing it, and I was just like, are they throwing out a lot of art supplies? Oh yeah, just campus? rich students going home for the break, and they throw away their homework assignments. Yes, you know they're, they're going to get new supplies or next they, semester. They, they flunked out. <laughs> Sometimes that maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right on. It, but uh, I just thought it, I was like, that's a really cool way to make art when you don't have art supplies, and at the same time, it's not like you're just picking a random dumpster. Yeah, I mean, it's really the only thing I've ever dumpster dived. Mm -hmm. Or dumpster dough. I'm not, sure. I'm not embarrassed to say I, I've gotten some furniture in the past. You know, college, oh, well, you college know, is, you know, that's usually season. not in the dumpster. I mean, like, to get the art supplies, oh, no, I mean, usually like, you had to, like, yeah. straight climb in and right on. throw yourself out. Now, we've talked about um, influences. And theater, definitely in there, of course. And I noticed you didn't talk about John Cameron Mitchell. Uh-huh. Or well, Dark or Orchestra. Or The Grateful Dead. Uh, yeah. So, these were not childhood influences. Okay, fair enough. Fair so, enough. To be fair. Um, uh, but later in life. It's uh, it's the things that make me feel ah. good. I think I like uh, Grateful Dead, Dark Star Orchestra, right. um, uh, Max Creek is an East Coast band that I love that's okay. similar style. I'll check them out. That's the music that makes me relax and feel happy. Right. Uh, for me, it's the soundtrack of driving out to the mountains for the afternoon. Right. You know? And... Uh, it's interesting because I, I go through phases where I really hold on to that. And last year during the pandemic was completely one of those where I was like, oh, I need, I need the Grateful Dead. I need to make my heart happy and remember right. better times. And That's what music is for. Yeah, absolutely. And then John Cameron Mitchell is... Uh, uh, for probably... those of you that don't know, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. If you haven't checked it out, check that out. It'll tell you a lot about what you need to know. Yeah, it'll, it'll tell you a lot about me, I'm sure. No, I meant about uh, John Cameron, but yeah. Yeah, it'll tell you a lot about me. <laughs> it tells you a lot about a person if they like it's that. It's one of my favorite things. I mean, you know, I grew up doing theater and I love music. Oh, yeah. now, when you said that, I was like, there it is. You know, I was like, now it makes sense. I love musical theater, but Hedwig is, in my opinion, you know, the, the musical of all musicals. You know, it's a rock opera technically, but... It's probably had the biggest effect on me of mm -hmm. any gift that theater has given me. Bigger than Rocky, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah, I think so. Although I think that's like a prerequisite, you know, course that I had, you know, completed <laughs> as a teenager. So <laughs> Rocky Horror ready. Picture Show is is Hedwig uh, 1A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, nice. You know, that's uh, an important part of what I get from that sort of... Uh, alternative style of theater, I guess. Um, nice. It's really important to me, and it's, it's cool because I, I discovered Hedwig in my 20s. As uh, you do. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. 
um, you know, and, and it had existed for a while, and I just I wasn't aware at first. And then uh, my beautiful friend, uh, Robin Hare, introduced me to it. I worked with him, a uh, little coffee shop. I was the barista out front, and he was the cook in the back. And, uh, you know, at 6 a.m., feeding breakfast to professors from Brown University, uh, all of a sudden, the song Angry Inch was playing, and I'm like, what, what, are, what are we what are we listening to at six in the morning? Uh, you know, I'm seeing interesting facial expressions on the people I'm serving, and, uh, and he I, was just I shocked. I probably would, like, even knowing it, you'd just be like, is that, is that Angry Inch? Having, having never heard it in my life, you right. know, uh, so... So big thanks to Robin for introducing me to it. Because when I asked him what it was, he was like, are you seriously telling me you don't know Hedwig? And he's like, you're coming to my house tonight and we're watching the movie. Nice. It's mandatory. Oh, man. I, that's kind of up there with this. I had the same thing when someone's never heard of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. And you're just like, do you have any lipstick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Uh, my wife actually gave me the V. Have you been to a... You've been, you've seen the whole thing that they put someone through who's never been to a live. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. In my teenage years, my my little group of close friends in high school uh, right. were all part of the local shadow cast, and so. My my wife took me uh, in her senior year of college. I was there with her, and she took me to a showing. Uh, it was a Halloween contest, costume contest as well, and I was Frankfurter, and I won. Nice. And my nipples were shaped. Aww. Of course, it's, it's, of course worth it's it rough. For the honor. Of course, it's rough. But no, because there was a <laughs> runway and I sold it, honey. Because I'd seen it before on, on TV, you know, but I'd never actually seen it with all the yelling back, you know, like, castles don't have phones. That's, which <laughs> we have a whole other, or, or, some friends of ours have a whole other story I won't go into, but um, suffice it to say, real castle, real German, said the line, and one of the people didn't. No, the reference, and the other person was just die laughing. <laughs> They're like, "What?" Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was my that's my me memories of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Is not all the times I saw it like on TV or whatever uh, uh, censored, but going to see the actual thing. And that same night, they had Drag Kings come and do a show, nice. which was fun. No, I'm I'm really into drag culture too. It's a big part of yeah. What makes me happy in life? I have you love been to Oscars queens. for brunch? I haven't. I haven't either. It, I, Should we go? It seems <laughs> it seems expensive. Well, that that can be it's, a problem sometimes with yeah. drag. Uh, not all. No, I drag just mean because it's because it's, it's Oscars. Because it's you know, yeah. uh, Oscar Goodwin, former mayor. Uh, but uh, anyway, moving on. We're tangent, tangent. Speaking of all that, you. Uh, are you still getting geek dating site ads on Facebook? <laughs> no, uh, I guess they. Apparently, saw Facebook I decided that you, maybe you, you don't need a, a geek date after all. Yeah. She, she was getting pestered with them for a while. Yeah. That's right true. Um, Thanks for that. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads perfectly into your Spotify playlist, Songs to Cry With. Oh, no. <laughs> I saw that and I'm like, no shit. You know, crying is good therapy. Uh, but I, the I songs am... you have on there range from like Pink Floyd to Joey Hines. It's, it's true. You never know. Does what... Joey know? Uh, probably, maybe. Joey, uh, she's crying on your songs, man. Uh, well, they're very effective. But some um, of them are downright sad, yes. So uh, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say that that's a big part about like what I stand for. So I've always said you for stand years. For crying? Well, I, I am a, I, I am an Avenger for tears. I like to stand up for crying because people think of it as a sign of weakness, but I think of it as a sign of strength. If you're right. willing to be vulnerable and let people see you I'm cry, cry, or, right now a little bit. Yeah, see, don't cry. No, you can, you should cry. It's, no, it's a good laughing. release. Uh, you know, sometimes I just sort of feel off and like I need to cry. Maybe I'm not ready to deal with the things that I need to cry about. So yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, when I'm feeling sad, I'll go home and watch a sad movie so that I can be crying about that instead of about the, ah, the thing, whatever the thing is. And that works really well for me. And I definitely have plenty of friends who think that's funny, who would say, like, if you're feeling sad, why wouldn't you watch a happy movie, something funny, and no, no, I get, it. get some laughter? And laughter is great therapy, but crying is also great therapy. So I've always tried to 
sort of give friends in my life permission to cry by reminding them that like, if you're not afraid to cry, you're kind of a badass in my point of view. Oh, and I agree. No, I agree. And especially men, especially. Because uh, it's super, it's super awesome. important to be able to, however you got to do it, wherever you got to go, let it, let yourself cry, let yourself rage, whatever you got to do. Um, like, but it's like you said, I'm sorry to cut you off. When you're sad, you, you want to watch something else sad and kind of like transfer it over there. I get that because I'll do the same thing sometimes with anger. Yeah. I'll, I'll like hit the gym or I'll listen to, you know, something, you know, like, uh, metal or something something that gets me angry at something else because I don't what I what I'm angry at is going to affect say my family or you know my personal mental health well and holding it in certainly will affect your health so right I think right, it's, right I think it's really healthy to find those good outlets like you know for me you know sadness is kind of an easier one to deal with better to cry over something other than right. what you're dealing with than to hold it in you know, for me, my anger, you know, I, I save it for the drum, you know, or for, for when I'm talking to the phone company, you know. Right. And now, uh, <laughs> speaking of drum, t today, stick around. She's going to be playing a few songs for us on guitar. That's right. But not drum, but you do also have a, is that a djembe? Djembe, yes. Djembe. Um, I've got a drum over there too, but it's not as a djembe. I don't know what the, I forget the name of it, but. It's uh, a shame. We'll have to get you a djembe. It's okay. Christmas so is much, coming. I have so much stuff around. You'll love it. Wait till you see room six. It's <laughs> seriously, it's, it's it's cramped, but okay. Um, so, but yeah, stick around. We're gonna hear some songs. Uh, anything not on the EP you're gonna play today? Uh, I thought about it, but not today. Okay. Really just so we're gonna... gonna, you get a sneak peek at some songs off of her new EP, Wild and Free. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Okay. And hang out. And I guess temporarily we'll say uh, goodbye. We'll see you upstairs in room six. Bye for now. Ever since I stood up on my own, people lining up to throw their stones, but than to let them keep me down I pick myself up off the ground And I used to shy away from Standing up and speaking my peace But life never gets better when you're living to people, please I just gotta be me I just wanna live free There's no other way to be than living with integrity I just wanna live free I just gotta be me Unapologetically Hey, yeah, hey, yeah Hey, yeah, hey, yeah Seems like you're spinning for me to jive with that cause I am trying I'm trying to live in the now and I'm gonna pave my road somehow and no I'm not saying that those weren't some really great times But I have to believe that the best things I've yet to find I just got
gotta be me I just wanna live free There's no other way to be than living with integrity I just wanna live free I just gotta be me Unapologetically knows what to say somehow forbidden from saying anything but you can't stop me from singing well maybe I'm not anybody's dream come true but I I believe we both know that you should treat me better than you do. I still gotta be me. I just wanna live free. There's no other way to be than living with integrity. I just wanna live free. I just want to be me Unapologetic 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 Unapologetically Go over 
over there and tickle your brain Instead I try not to look Cause your brilliant imagination Shocked my heart out of stagnation And your sharp vocabulary Hits me harder than a dictionary You're the talk of my dreams Let's be weird together You're the king of the nerds And nobody could love me better Cause everyone else is so boring Everyone else is so lame Never be the same well, Other guys, they come and go And some of them even try But you're so goddamn perfect You've gone and ruined every other guy and they call me the queen of the geeks We're a perfect couple of freaks You're the dog of my dreams Let's get weird together You're the king of the nerds we should build a kingdom together Cause life without you is so boring Life without you is so lame I'll never be the same Now I might have 
lost a friend and it breaks my heart it breaks my heart and I wish that I could call you but I'm not allowed that I was more than a face in your crowd but should you ever need one yeah you've got a friend in me I hope you know that you will always In my heart, you're in my heart, you're in my heart, you're in my heart.